will. To accept this call, press zero. To re- your current balance is twelve dollars thirty five cents. This call is from a collection facility and is subject to monitoring and recording. Thank you for using Global Tel Link. Yeah, hello. Hey, Mike, how you doing, sir? Doing all right, man. Is this Rodney? Yeah, this is Rodney. Rodney, I'm going to connect you with the stepdad, uh, Juan Campos' okay. stepdad. Okay. All right. Hey, uh, Barry, how are you, sir? Um, fine. I'm not fine, but I, I'm, uh, we're trying. We're trying to get Juan's body back, um, and so I'm like yes, sir. still in the grieving, still in the grieving process. But I understand. Is, I have Rodney. Yes, sir. I have Rodney. I have Rodney Ward on the phone. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. But, uh, please, please understand that what I'm in the middle of. Please. I, I definitely do, sir. Okay. I just want to, you know, send you my condolences. I, I did not know the young man, but, you know, for what's been happening in here, we, we want to make sure that we seek justice for him and all the other people who have been victimized or hurt in here. Um, so whatever I can do to help in that process, in your grieving process, or just getting this story out, then I'm willing to do that. Yeah, I think... I, th- I think... Our- our, our, our lawyer, I told him about you, and I think he, he's quite interested in, in in what you have to say uh, based on my initial conversation with with our lawyer. But do you have anything more? Do you have anything more to add, Rodney, to what you was said earlier in a phone conversation with Lamar? Um, as far as if you've heard the recording of what I said, it's basically the same thing. I just wanted you to hear it from my mouth. Um, but that, I think the. The, the major key thing that I did notice was the day before the 28th when the response team, the EMS team, and the crime scene unit, um, and the police did show up to do their investigation. Um, on Wednesday, the 27th, that is when I noticed um, the two officers that were on duty were Officer Lindsay and Officer Dean. I noticed Lindsay had medical with him, and they had walked over to cell 19. And I guess because he was unresponsive, they opened the door and went in. Um, Lindsay went in and the uh, nurse went in. And then Lindsay came back out and sat on the table and called the other CO over, like with the trash can and um, like a broom to clean up the room and everything. So as far from that point, um, I'm not sure what may have taken place or what had happened or if he was unresponsive at that time. I just know that they did go in there and they started cleaning the cell out that day. Um, so, so, so you're suspecting that that he was un- unresponsive on the 27th, uh, even though they reported to us that he was unresponsive on the 28th and that he died on the 28th. You're, you're suspecting that he may have actually died on the day before on the 27th. It, that, that's a possibility. I'm not sure because exactly, we're not sure. I, I'm, in, I'm in my cell. I'm 24 hour lockdown, so I couldn't hear mm-hmm. everything. I couldn't really see all the yeah. way in his cell. Yeah. But from what I saw, the seal sat on the table, and then they came and cleaned out his cell. So okay. I'm, I'm not exactly sure if it was if he was unresponsive during that time, or you know, and they just let let him lay there, and then the next day they called the response team and said he was unresponsive. So I'm I'm not really sure. Right. Oh, oh, uh, his um, from a girlfriend is, is asking, what about this um, statement that he was taken out in a cart? Yeah, so okay. you know they um, they put him in the body bag and then they put him on a, a cart, like a dolly cart, a long cart, and you know pushed him out the door. Um, I couldn't really see where they took him at because again, I'm, I'm in my cell. But yeah, they didn't have like a stretcher or anything. They had the stretcher when the EMS team first arrived. Um, mm-hmm. And that was that. Let me let me give you the time stamp for that. Fire and rescue arrived on scene around 8.30 p.m. 8.30 a.m. I'm sorry, 8.30 a.m. Um, and they tried to revive them at that time. At that time, that's when they had the stretcher. Um, and that was at about between 8.30 and um, 9 o'clock. 
o'clock, and then just to give you like the times of like what was going on, he was not put in a body bag until about 2 p.m. So from 8.30 to 2 p.m., you know, they were doing, I guess, their crime scene investigation. And crime scene investigation didn't show up until, let me give you that time to, uh, the first officer showed up when the lieutenants and sergeants had arrived and um, came into our dorm. And the first officer showed up at 10 a.m. So from 8.30 to 10, we had the arrival of the fire and rescue, and then at 10, we had the arrival of the first police officer. Um, okay. I guess that's what the, uh, the fire and rescue and the EMS team determined that he was not responsive, and, you know, he, he was uh, no longer with us. But, there, but you, you don't have any um, indication that fire and rescue came on the 27th, right? Only on the 28th? Oh, no, they came on the 28th. No, they didn't come on the 27th. They no, definitely so, didn't come on the 27th. So no, no one came on the 27th, right? No, sir. Nope. He, okay. was, he wasn't so-called found unresponsive until the 28th, and that was around, let me give you that time stamp. Um, it, was a, it had to be between 6.30 and 7.30, and that's when... They had called for fire and rescue and the uh, EMS team, our EMT team, and they didn't arrive until 8.30. And, and that was all through to the gate 24. And at any time before... Um, I'm just uh, jotting this down, uh, Rodney. Um, okay. So, um, you know, when I hear you say this, what I'm thinking about is what, what the hell was going on um, the night of the 27th and between that night of the 27th and 6.30 in the morning. What was the condition yeah. of our son during those nighttime hours? Right. That's, that's what I was wondering. That's what I was trying to figure out because I, and I wish I knew more about that because I, I that's what kind of had me on like the edge of like, okay, if, if they noticed that something was wrong with them on the 27th, and it certainly sounds like that. Right. It sounds like that, right? There's a problem there. Because for you to find them unresponsive at 7.30 in the morning or 8.30 in the morning, that's a whole day that went by with no no medical attention, no anything happening for the young man. Um, so that, yeah, that kind of thing bothered me. So as, as, as far as you know, I mean, obviously... Um, there needs to be a thorough investigation, a real investigation. But as far as you know, there was no medical intervention at all between the um, the, the the time of of Lindsay's arrival in one cell and six thirty in the morning and six thirty in the morning so the next the next day. Let's just be, let's just make sure we're clear here. Lindsay mm -hmm. did show up with the nurse that was supposed to be taking the young man's vitals. Um, that day on the 27th. Now, right. when they took his vitals, I don't know if they actually took his vitals. All I know is they started cleaning out his cell from all the trash being in there, and it looked like it was a lot of trash in there. So I'm, that's all I could see from my vantage point. And what time was that on the 27th? On the 27th, that was around, it had to be, I'm thinking of the medical time frames. Medical usually comes around 10.30 in the morning, um, or a little bit before 10.30 in the morning. So Lindsay and the nurse showed up at the, at the cell in the morning of the 27th? Yes. Was he able to hear anything? Yeah, were you able to hear anything that was going on? No, I, I was not able to hear anything. Um, like I said, what I saw was both of him and the nurse go in and him come out, sit on the table directly in front of his door and the nurse came out and then they started cleaning out his cell. And about what time was that on the 27th? That was around, it had to be between, I want to say between 9.30 and 
in the morning. Yes, sir. So what the hell is going on that, that during that 24-hour period between the morning of the 27th and the morning of the 28th? Right, that's what I was trying to figure out. Because if you notice that he wasn't outbound, if he was unresponsive during the 27th, there should have been EMS there immediately, or EMT there immediately, fire and rescue, then the investigation should have started on the 27th. But if you waited a whole day, there's foul play there. There's something going on that, you know, um, I've, I've been trying to, like, put it together in my head, like, what could have possibly happened? Mm -hmm. And did he see him at all? Did, uh, you were not able to see Juan's body at all? Even when he was alive? No, I only saw it in the body pack. Um, there's, I think, the only other people that had a vantage point was, um, it was, I'm trying to think right now. Um, and my statement, hold on, I got it right here. Uh, Mr. Castro, he, he was able to see the body of the victim positioned. Um, his head was in between the toilet and the wall, and his feet were by the bunk, and his head were below the vent, and that was on the 28th. Mm -hmm. um, and and uh, were you or anybody else that might have had um, uh, either heard or seen um, something on the 27th or 28th. Uh, were any of you, have any of you been tr been transferred? So I got, I got transferred out. I'm in, after that day, um, I got transferred out to uh, another cell and to another unit. So I'm in unit 10 now and, and O and cell 2. So they transferred me out the next day. Did, 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 did they give a reason for your being transferred? They did not. What do you, why do you think you were transferred? I would try to keep me quiet. Okay. Are you aware of anybody else who may have been transferred? I'm, I'm not sure because I was one of the first ones that was transferred, but I know it was a lot of movement going on the, the past two days. Or while the day after I got transferred, a lot of movement happened. I got transferred twice from... First, they moved me to Unit 10 um, and Pod M, and then I was in Cell 2, and then they moved me that same day into Unit O, um, um, Pod O, Cell 2. Okay. And Rodney, does, does the jail monitor your telephone calls? They do. Do they listen as you're talking or only afterwards? Um, I'm not sure. I, I can't verify that one. Okay. Did they shut off the phones? They did that day on the 28th. They shut the phones off until about 5.30, 6 o'clock. Was, was that not normal? Yeah, that's, that's not normal. Um, they didn't want any of us using the phones during that time. Is Lindsay no back? So on the 28th, they shut down the phones? I don't know if they did it for the whole jail, but I know for our for our pod that we couldn't use the phones until about five thirty a.m. on the twenty eighth. Until about five thirty p.m. Yes, sir. Okay. Um. Thank you so much. Um, yes. Sir. Who, I wish I had more information. I wish I could have heard or seen more, but that's um, that's what I got. And I have. I think you heard the rest of the recording. You know, I have the time stamps for when everyone arrived to fight the fire and rescue. Um, um when I did, what, did, you get what? Did, did you get this part in, in the voice recording? So on the, I want to say between the. 25th, 26th, or the 27th, between the 25th and the 27th, they put a cover on his door, like a cover to block people from seeing it. And, you know, why? I'm not sure that's usually for, like, protective custody or for someone who, you know, has done something vile, like rape or something like that. So I don't, I don't know why they put the cover on his door that day. Okay. 
it, you know, that, that doesn't sound like anything that would apply to one ever. Between, between the 25th and the 27th, they put a cover. It, it was between the 25th and 26th. The 27th, it was already on there. Okay, between the 25th and the 26th, they put a cover on his on his door? Yes, sir. So nobody could... Pocket window so nobody could see him. Put a cover on his... On his windows? Or... On his window. On his window. And that's not normal either. No, that's only for, like I said, protective custody or someone who has like a, uh, uh, a sexual violent crime. Yeah, well, that doesn't apply to our son. Okay. Um, and and you know he was going through a fentanyl withdrawal, is is what was going on. Okay. So, what? Why would they put a cover on on his window? Yeah, um, that's that's what had me confused. Um, let's see. Uh, one, what? One final thing, Rodney, if I remember from the tape, you mentioned something about some blood on the door. Yes. Um, so they were taking pictures. And someone said that they heard or seen blood on the top of his door, um, the top corner, top right corner, I guess, of his door. And I've seen the crime scene unit um, come in to take pictures of his door a couple times. So... Um, I couldn't, again, from my vantage point, I couldn't see the top of his door. I could see uh, from the window and below. The blood on the right corner, top of his door. Okay. Um, what, what do you think happened? He was arrested on that, that Wednesday, whatever that date of the Wednesday was. Um, so that would be the 20th of March. Okay. So, so he will be there. So, so let's say Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. About a week. A week. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Eight. 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 eight, eight, eight. Um, the 27th. Yeah. Yeah. And that, would, that, that would have been his eighth day. Yeah. And the 20th would have been his eighth day. Yeah. No, the, actually, the twenty seventh would have been his eighth day. If you count, if you count the twentieth, the twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, and 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 so eight days of a fentanyl withdrawal. I would assume that he was probably still withdrawal, but almost ready to come out of it because I, I heard it's a, it lasts about nine days, give or take. Um, and so, um, one other question: Is it possible? In 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 uh, for a person in depot, was he put in the depot right away? I guess is one question. I'm seeing that's what I don't know because when they brought him in, I'm not sure. That's <laughs> I wish I would have seen that date. Um, maybe somebody else may know, but I, from what I noticed, the strange things happening was on that Wednesday on the 27th. Um, yeah, but I wish I knew when he was brought in there. Yeah, yeah, what, yeah on the 20th. So and, and then the other question. Is, how easy or difficult would it have been for him to get fentanyl in the in, in the jail? In that unit that we're in, it would have been nearly impossible unless a CO brought it in. Yeah, like, okay. It would have been impossible unless a CO brought it in or a trustee yeah. had it. But usually it wouldn't be a CO. Right. 
Yeah, and I don't believe one had any visitors either. Okay. Uh, I, every time I'm, I think about this, I just use the word fuckers, those fuckers. Yeah, yeah that's how I'm thinking about them right now. Um, um, the way they're, they're trying to cover it up because we're supposed to be under their watch why, and if they allow something mm -hmm. to happen, they notice that he was mm -hmm. with Well, I mean, there's, there's, there's just a huge red flag here between the, the morning of the 27th when Lindsay and the nurse show up and then they start cleaning the cell to the morning of the, to the morning of the 28th. What was Ron's condition during that 24 hour period? Exactly. Exactly. And that's what I was wondering because again, the strangest thing to me is for them to go into the cell and clean it out. The yeah. They put us in yeah. handcuffs and, you know, shackles on our feet and, mm -hmm. you know, they just take us out of our cell and we go to our visits or whatever and they don't clean our cells out. The only time they come in our cell and they start touching our stuff is if they're doing a TSL search or a mm -hmm. random search. That's yeah. not the case for that matter. Yeah, okay. This has been very helpful. Thank you, Roddy. And, um, yeah. Um, so hopefully we're gonna we're gonna help to um, cl clean up the situation. Yeah, um, and if you guys need anything from me, man, um, if the lawyer wants to speak with me, he would have to do a contact visit or a regular visit, and I, I'd definitely be willing to sit with him and talk. Yeah, how, how does that work? You would have to request it. Um, no, I, no that, the lawyer would have to request me. Oh, so the, the lawyer could actually reach out. Yes, and Mike has my information. Okay, and are you, are you, and you're no longer in the D pod. You're now in a, another pod. No, sir. I'm I'm in um, unit ten, uh, pod. Oh, I'm in pod O, cell two. Okay, so you're uh, unit ten. Pod and cell two. O, cell two. Okay, Rodney. Okay, sir. Um, like I said, if you got need anything from me, I'm, I'm here and I'm available. Um, but I, hopefully, I should be getting out of here in the next week or two, um, just due to my situation and how they mishandled me while I was here, and how I shouldn't even be here in the first place. But that's another story. Yeah. Um, we're, we're trying yeah, it's to another story. Now. Yeah, we're trying to get it out of our police forces, out of our out of our counties, out of our communities, mm -hmm. because it's not right what they do to people. So, what, to cover it up. so what, once you get out, because it's going to take a little bit of time for me to get um, a, per, a, a personal representation for my wife and me, or, or especially for my wife, the biological mom, okay. uh, you know, there's, you have to meet with the county uh, probate officers and whatnot and, and 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 then you get this kind of it's like a power of attorney of the state and and and, and, and that enables uh, a lot of things to happen um but assuming that assuming that you'll be out uh, before then um how will the lawyer be able to get in touch with you Rodney if the lawyer wants to I I will be able to get in contact with you guys through Mike and then you'll have I'll give you my information as soon as I get out like my cell phone number okay and okay Okay, thank you so much, Rodney. I really appreciate it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, of course. And I, again, my condolences. I'm, I'm so sorry for what happened. Um, and I'm, I'm just hoping for the best right now that we can get some resolve for this situation. Got to get to the bottom of it. Thank you so much, Rodney. Yes, sir. All right, sir. You take care. You too, sir. Have a good one. Bye. Thank you for using Global Tellink.